You know, Charlie, we always see a smile on Tony Shaver's face, but I, I understand why this year, when you got 12 of 13 Letterman coming back, I think the smile's a little broader this year, Tony. Well, we're excited about the season, <laughs> no question about it. And really, honestly, I didn't think we were far from being a really good team last year. We lost a lot of close basketball games, but uh, uh, I, I love the blend of this basketball team right now. Uh, you want One thing i got to ask you quick. Everybody talks about Marcus Thornton. Tell us a little bit about him. <laughs> he's pretty good, but he's a freshman. I, know, I knew you were going to say that. Uh, no, he, he really honestly has a chance to be an impact player for us right away. I mean, I, I don't want to oversell the right. fact uh, that he's had success in his past. Uh, the one thing we've known about Marcus Thornton is he could really score the ball. He played at a very high level in, in uh, competition in high school. Is tremendous score of the ball. Now, what we weren't sure of is how he would fit in defensively, how he would fit in as a teammate. You never know that about right. freshmen. But in his first three or four days, he's been terrific. He's a very intelligent player. And, I mean, yesterday he scored pretty well, but he had six assists and no turnovers as well. So uh, he has a chance to really help our program. I think the good news about it, he's got some great leadership above him, and I think that will help him a lot. Yeah, and I'll tell you the biggest thing I should mention about Marcus Thornton is that he might be the hardest worker I've ever been around. I mean, he's very talented, but he's been in our gym more, Charlie, this fall than anybody. And uh, – so when you get a guy that loves the game and is good at the game, that's a great thing, great combination. Now, Charlie, we get Tony one year removed from not having to talk about a couple of freshmen, but a couple of sophomores who really were great as freshmen in Britt and Boatner. These two kids really delivered for you as the season went on in particular. They, they really did. I mean, we, put, we threw them through the fire. Now, I'm telling you, but uh, they both started the last half of the season. And I thought it, by February we're really playing at a high level. Uh, Brandon has what I would call CAA athleticism and speed. And, uh, and Julian Boatner, I think, by the end of the year, proved to be one of the better shooters in the league. And I think you'll see both of them improve this year. Uh, they're both physically stronger. I think you'll see that when you look at them. Um, I think obviously have a better understanding of what we want and how to play, and uh, we're very excited about their young talent. To that degree, because remembering talking with you last year at this time on CAA Media Day, and you knew the challenges ahead of you, you knew you were going to have to have a young team. As it unfolded, did you start to see the things that you were hoping to see? And how do you make sure that carries over? Because there is a lot of promise, but these guys, you know, are aware that people are kind of patting them on the back. Yeah, I, th I thought we really improved last year, and that was the best part of that season. And as I said earlier, we weren't far from being pretty good. We lost 10, I believe, 10 conference games by five or fewer points. Uh, now, obviously, we've got to get better in two areas. We've got to get better defensively, and we've got to win close ball games. If you don't win close ball games in the CAA, it's going to be a long season. Uh, but uh, there's no guarantee that we'll get better. But I think the blend we have right now is so good, and we're going to be more versatile. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to have more weapons. You know, I think last year we relied on Quinn McDowell a little bit more than we would like to, and uh, I think, uh, you know, Quinn made the comment in, in his pickup games the other day. He said, I said, how do you like this team? He said, Coach, he said, it doesn't matter who's playing on which team. It's hard to stop the other team right now. So uh, we're pretty excited. Well, you know what? If we bring up Quinn McDowell. We'd be remiss not to talk about this young man. He is, without a question, one of the best in the league. I think he will be one of the best to have played at William & Mary. Uh, you got to be happy he's coming back. Well, I, I really am. I'm trying to figure out how to get a little more uh, – a little more time with him, a few more years. But, you know, Quinn's very unique, Charlie, and, and I think we've all seen that. But he has a tremendous blend of the ability to lead, to lead young people, um, you know, to be demanding yet be a part of the team. Um, but there's a streak of competitiveness in Quinn McDowell that I don't think a lot of people see. And uh, there's a little mean streak in the young guy. Uh, I've often referred to him as a choir boy, or a lot of people look at him and think of Opie. And, uh, <laughs> but the kid really competes at a very high level, and there's not a situation that he'll back down from. You know, it's interesting because Quinn is the uh, leading returning scorer in the CAA at 15.9 points a game. But as you mentioned, his character doesn't, isn't about that, all right, get me the ball. It's about right. what can I do to help this team. It truly is. And I think it's an old coaching cliche, but when your best player is your best worker, mm -hmm. you've got something special. But, and the, the other thing about Quinn that separates him is his efficiency. I mean, he doesn't have to have a high volume shot to score. He set a CAA tournament record last year with 35 points in the, in the tournament game and took 12 shots. So he has the ability to be very efficient in what he does. 
You mentioned the CAA tournament. You were so close a couple years ago, and you saw what VCU did last year. You saw how this conference picked up three bids. What has that meant to the conference, and, and what has that meant to your program at William & Mary as the message gets out about how deep and good the CAA is? Well, I think the exposure's done great things for all of us. Now, somebody asked me you know, earlier, would it, would, did VCU being in the Final Four help our recruiting? And I said the one thing I'm sure of, it helped their recruiting, uh, <laughs> but I think it helps us all. I mean, uh, and I think the fact that we played on more national televised games with Comcast and, and all types of networks, it's helped our program. And I, honestly, when I first arrived at William & Mary to go to, to uh, Indiana, the Midwest, and talk about the CAA and William & Mary, I had some explaining to do. But I think right now, the CAA and our name, the College of William & Mary, is, uh, is much more identifiable. And it's, uh, it's helped us all, no question about it. Well, Tony, it's great seeing you. We wish you good luck this year. As we mentioned, 12 returning letterman on a 13 it's a pretty good uh, deck to have and a great coach to run the show thanks for being with us appreciate it guys tony shaver the head coach at william and mary go to espn3 for the complete replay of the 2011 caa basketball media day live